as we've been um, going over in, in this series, uh, as we started the new year and we looked at uh, the way people always make resolutions and they uh, gear up and try to, try to make themselves a better person, we've titled this series, Being a Better You. I hope that it's helped you all as we've been going through this series. I hope that it's helped you uh, to just gain a new perspective. It has, it has me just studying for it and, and, and getting it together. Uh, it helps to get a new perspective. Now, there's a lot of money spent on being a better you. Uh, there's uh, all kinds of self-help books, workshops. People go to therapists. Um, all about helping themselves. Then that, 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 all that money doesn't even include uh, all the dieting and fad diets and all that stuff. Have y'all ever noticed that <laughs> the week after Christmas, from, from Christmas till New Year's, just about every uh, commercial on TV is either Nutrisystem or Weight Watchers or... Uh, 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 Nicorette gum or, you know, something about uh, something that leads toward a resolution that people come up with. You know, we, we always uh, we're always trying to uh, at the first of the year change courses, change our ways. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with resolutions. Uh, I've uh, I, I, I do it sometimes. I've, I've, I've started several new things at the beginning of years. And um, sometimes I've been successful. Sometimes I haven't. Um, we, uh, and, and I think that everybody has tried it at some point or the other. One year I made it and I, and I lost quite a bit of weight. And the next year I, did, I, I gained it all back. You know, that kind of stuff. It happens. Um, but we started looking at this couple of weeks ago about being a better you and of course we started out just to recap uh, that in order to be the best you that you can be the first thing you have to have is faith you have to have faith in God you have to put your faith first of all in him for your salvation you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation but then beyond that you have to make him Lord of your life put your faith in him and walk with him step by step you need to allow him him to guide you because the truth of the matter is we're not very good leaders none of us are uh, we may think we are and you may be a good a good leader and so on but if you're not following God you can't lead anybody in the right path uh, because he's the only one that knows what's best for us he's the only one that knows the best best path to take and for that reason we have to follow after him and then last week we talked about the fact that if you want to be the best you that you can be, you have to have forgiveness in your heart. You cannot carry a grudge and uh, be the best you. And, and we've, we looked at it this way. If you want God to forgive you, then you've got to forgive others. It's as simple as that. And, and if we don't, you can't be the best you because you will carry bitterness. You will, you will be, uh, you can't find your own joy. You just can't have it and you can't be a better you as long as you're holding things against other people. But today, as we go on, we're going to, uh, we're going to look at something that kind of goes right along with last week. And, and we're going to look at something that makes us a better you. And, and when we do things, when we do things for others, and, and that's, we need to be doing things for others. We need to be helping other people. We need to be doing things. We need to be doing things for other people, but at the same time, doing things for God. Uh, Jesus told us, in, in, in as much as you've done for the least of these children, you've done it to me. So when we do things for other people, when we help other people, when we, when we uh, serve other people, we're serving God. And we need to do that, and we need to serve God, serve other people. But it's not the fact of serving other people that makes us a better person. It's the motivation 
of why we serve other people. Now we need to be, I, I've known people that go out and they do work for people and they help people and they try their best, but they've got the wrong motivation. You see, the motivation that motivates us to do for God, the motivation that makes us to do for other people is what can make us a better person. Even when we talked about forgiveness last week, if we only, if you only forgive other people so that God will forgive you, then your motivation's all wrong. If you only do good for others so that you will have uh, blessings from God, if you only serve God to gain His favor, then you've got the wrong motivation. So today, we're going to talk about what that motivation should be and how that motivation is what makes us a better person. We're going to start out in Luke chapter 10 this morning. And this is such a familiar passage. And a matter of fact, I, I preached this from this not too long back. Uh, and it's a, it's a parable that we've all heard. Uh, it's a parable that we're all familiar with. And many of us could probably even quote most of this parable. But uh, this morning we're going to look at it a little different. Luke chapter 10, and we'll begin in verse 30. I remember, as like I said, we, we preached this not too long ago, and many of you have heard this over and over and over and over. I heard a, a preacher one time talking about uh, why we preach the same things over and over, and why sometimes you hear, it seems like, you know, we, we, we just go on and on and on with something. Well, I remember when I played football, and it don't matter if it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever sport it is, we did the same drill for 30 minutes at the beginning of every practice. I remember when I, was, when I started out as a lineman in fifth grade playing football, we did the same drills on my first practice in fifth grade as I did my last practice my senior year. And the reason was is because going over it and going over it and going over it made me better at it and it made us good at it and it made it automatic for us and for that reason that's why that's why we're going to talk about what we talked about I don't know how many more times this year we'll talk about it but it's it's something that's important and for that reason it's something that we talk about a lot then Jesus answered and said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothes wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite who arrived at that place came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave, it, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for all that you uh, bless us with. And we just thank you, Lord, for your, your words and your scripture that tells us, Lord, how that we need to live. But, Lord, most of all, how we need to love you and to love others. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, like I said, this is a very, very familiar passage, and it can be preached in many, many different ways. I, I've heard it preached as, as to uh, that we should be always doing good for others, that we should be helping others. I've, I've heard it preached that, uh, and, and, and even preached to myself, that we shouldn't have prejudices prejudices toward each other or toward other people. We've, we've, we've talked about... Um, 
so many different things, and, and that's the thing about many of Jesus' parables. They bring out so much of life. But I want you to notice something here about this man, about this Samaritan. And, and one of the things that, that we hear a lot is that, well, this, was a, this man shouldn't even have uh, cared at all about this Jewish man. We've heard that, that uh, he, he took care of him and that he went above and beyond what was expected of him and all that. But what was his motivation? I want you to point out that his motivation was not just because he felt sorry for the guy. His motivation was not just because he had guilt because he, had, he was able to walk. His motivation was not um, just being a good man. I want, to th I want you to think about this. Before Jesus told this parable, he had a lawyer that came to him. And this lawyer looked at Jesus and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, in perfect Jesus form, Well, what does the Scripture say? I, I love how Jesus would do that. He, would, he made you think. And I like to do that too. Is it makes you think, What did the Scripture say? Now, when the, the lawyer answered him, he proves a point. He proves a point that in most of the people in the world, if you look around you, most people know right from wrong. Did you know that? We live in a, we live in a world that it, it, it seems like and it looks like nobody knows right and wrong. It looks like the, the world is going to just crazy and that, that, that all these people don't know right from wrong but we see here this lawyer who is questioning Jesus knew the truth and Jesus made him think about it what is the truth what does the scripture say have you ever known people who are you can tell they're lost you can tell they don't live a Christian life you, you can tell that they live a life that is not pleasing to God but yet they'll try to quote scripture the, the thing is, is they know Scripture. They know what it says, a lot of it. They just will not accept it and will not apply it to their life. But when he asked the, the lawyer this, he said, So he answered, in verse 27, we back up a little bit. Verse 27 says, So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And your neighbor as yourself. You see, Jesus' story of the Good Samaritan, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan was not about us doing good things for other people. It was not about us helping other people. Jesus' story and parable of the Good Samaritan was about loving other people. If you were to go and look at all of Jesus' teachings, the majority of them are about love. The scriptures all point to love. Love of God, love for God, love from God, love for others. You see, Jesus wanted to point out to this lawyer, because the lawyer, he said, well, of course, but, but who's my neighbor? And that's when he told the story of the Good Samaritan, and he made it a point that this man had compassion on a man that he would not normally have been expected to have compassion on. It wasn't about just being a good man. It was about loving his fellow man. Folks, we, I, I love the way that Jesus put it. Uh, because some t Jesus was asked this same question more and more. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, Jesus was asked the question again, and he said, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You see, Jesus here, when he was asked about the great commandment, he goes back to a quote from Leviticus. He goes back to Leviticus chapter 19, which tells us, he has this in it that says, we shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I want to see the importance that Jesus puts on it here. I, in, in Exodus chapter 20, when he starts the Ten Commandments, and we, we always hold them up as the, the greatest, the ten. Jesus, it started out with, I am the Lord your God. You will have no other gods before me. I like the way he started it. I am the Lord your God. Whether you choose to, to believe it or whether you choose other gods, or what, I am the Lord. You will have no other gods before me. So that's the greatest. That's, that's the number one. And, and, and our love for God stems from that, from the fact that he is our God. And, and we know that loving God is the most important thing we can do. But when Jesus brought it up here, he said, the second is like it. In the King James, he says, like unto it. Which to me means that Jesus is putting just as much importance on loving your neighbor as he does on loving God. We know the importance of loving God. We know that, that we should love God because God first loved us. We know that God created us. God sent His Son all because He loved us. And for that we owe Him everything. And we owe Him all the love that we can muster. Jesus put it this way. With all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, with everything, every, in other words, every fiber of your being needs to be concentrated on loving God. That's Jesus' words. Everything about you needs to be on loving God. But the way he put it, just as important is loving your neighbor. Why does it hold the same importance? The same reason that forgiving others holds a great importance. Because he said, how can you love God whom you have not seen if you can't love your brother who you have? If you can't show love to your neighbor, if you can't have love to your neighbor, then you can't have love for God. One of the things as we start, when we started our, our study on the epistles of John, one of the things that, I, that we brought out, one of the things in my commentaries that I found out is the fact that it said, you can't love God any more than the person you love the least. Now that's hard for us to fathom and understand, but it goes back to that unforgiveness. If you've got somebody that you just it's just hard to love them. It's, it's somebody that, that you don't even like. I don't even like this person. How can I love them? No more love than you show to them can you show to God. You may say that you love God. You may come and you may, you may say you worship God and you may, you may put forth your best foot and you may, you may fool everybody into thinking how much you're showing love to God. But if you can't show love to your fellow man, if you can't show love to your neighbor, then you're not showing love to God. And, and Jesus pointed out here, who is the neighbor? We, we think, well, you know, I've got some pretty good neighbors. I can, I can show love to that neighbor. That, that's easy. But I can't show love to, to this person. 
Folks, Jesus pointed it out here with the, with the Good Samaritan. This was a man who he should have hated. This was a man that, that was, they were politically opposite. They were, they were, they were completely different. But he showed love. And if we want to be the best us, we have to have love. Like I said, if your motivation, like we talked about last week, if your motivation for forgiveness is to get forgiveness from God, then your motivation's wrong. Your, for, your motivation for forgiving other people needs to be because you love other people. Your motivation for doing good for other people is not so that, that God will reward you or that you'll get a pat on the back. It needs to be because you love them. Now, I know that's not always easy. Not everybody is as easy to love as I am. <laughs> I understand that. And for that reason, sometimes we got to work at it. Love, loving people is not always easy. And it boils down to this. Who do you think about? Who do you think about the most? Who do you put the most emphasis on? And the, the truth is, most of us, or most of the world, thinks about themselves. And like I said, sometimes our motivation for doing good for others is because we're thinking about ourselves. I will get a pat on the back. They will think highly of me. I might get a reward. I might get, you know, I, I will. I, now, I don't, I know that, that churches all over the world do this. But one of the things that has always bothered me, and, and I remember when I was down at First Baptist, just about everything in that church had a plaque on it. It had a, it had a tag on it. If the reason you give to any organization or the reason that you give to any special product or special uh, offering or the reason that you give to a, a fund drive or is so that your name will go or somebody that you love's name will go on a, on a window or on a, a pew or on a book or on anything else, if that's your motivation, then your thoughts are toward yourself. If anything, if any reason, if you expect somebody to thank you, if you expect somebody to pat you on the back, if you expect God to give you a reward, then your thoughts and your motivations are on you. And that is what is wrong with our world today. Now, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't get political much. But like I said, we've got a, our nation right now is in turmoil. And, and I don't, it, it don't matter where you stand. I'm not going to get into whether you're on the left or you're on the right. But both parts are guilty. The left, now, the, the left they're thinking only of themselves. They're thinking, well, you know, I deserve more. I think the government should give me more. I think the government should, should, uh, should take care of me. I think that those who have more should take care of me. I, 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 think that, uh, I, I think that I should be recognized. My views are different, and I think I should have total rights. And it's all thought about me. That's what the left's thinking, right? And all you people on the right are saying, hey, amen, amen. But guess what? The right, we think about me. I've worked hard. I've earned this. I want to keep this. I want my freedom. I want my... We're just as guilty. The truth of the matter is, is that both sides are thinking about themselves. Now, I'm not going to get into which side's right. 
See, I won't get political. I won't get into which side's right. The truth of the matter is, is that the whole world is guilty of thinking about me. If we thought more about others, and we, not just thinking about others, but if we had more love for others, if we thought about more, each other in love more, then we would maybe think, okay, I don't like the government telling me what my taxes should go toward, but, but you know what, I really, I've been really, really blessed, and, and maybe I should be doing more for other people. Maybe I should be helping more. Maybe I should be doing more for other people. And if both sides would start thinking more about the other side, then we would have a world that could get along a little better. We wouldn't be worried about a civil war. We wouldn't be wor worried about, about how people, uh, about the turmoil and, and what might come next week. If everybody would think more about the other person than they did about themselves. In love. See, that's the key. It's not just thinking about it. It's thinking about them in love. The thing is, if we loved our neighbor more, not only would we be a better us, but the world would be better for it. Back when, right after the election, there was... Uh, there was a lot of people posting, well, he's not my president. I'm not going to, you know, and I made a post, and it was just a simple post, and I don't, like I said, I, I don't get political a lot. I, I, I do, but not, I don't post political stuff. I don't normally preach political things, but I had posted something that just said, referred back to uh, Romans chapter 13 and said, you know, if you're a Christian, then you need to submit to the authority. And nothing has happened that God has not ordained. Nothing has happened that God is not still in control. And I had several people, one in particular who was a former pastor's brother-in-law, who attacked me, said that I, just, that I, I don't even preach on sin. And he went on to say that he hated the Democrats. That he hated anybody who could support abortion. I have a hard time with that. Because it's not about sin. And it's not about evil because we all have evil in us. We all have sin in us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Going back to the Sermon on the Mount. And, and, and as we've been talking about this better you, it seems like I keep coming back to the Sermon on the Mount, different portions of it, because that's what Jesus spoke about, is about being a better Christian. Matthew 5, 43 says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and, the, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. There's evil in this world. According to the left, the right is evil. Because we're... We're all, according to them, racist. We're, uh, we, we, we hate gays. We, um, we're narrow-minded. And for that reason, we're, we're evil. 
And then the right says the left is evil because they support homosexuals and they, uh, they, they, they support pro, uh, pro-choice. They, they want to take from what, we, what we've earned. We both have evil in us. We both, both sides have sin. But that, and I don't, I don't agree with a lot of what either side stands for in a lot of ways. But that does not give me the right to hate anyone. Jesus said, love your enemy. If you only love people that's lovable, like me, then what good have you done? If you only love those people who love you, what have you done different than anybody else? We as Christians are called to love those who don't love us. We're called to love those who are hard to love. The world is not going to agree with you. And we as Christians are just as guilty as the rest of the world for, for holding out those people who we don't agree with. Those people, listen, there's a lot of people in this world that are full of sin. And we like to think, you know, well, but I don't sin as much as them, maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe their sin's different than mine. It don't matter. I still have to love them. You still have to love them. Because God told us to. That same scripture that where, where Paul, the same letter, the same chapter where Paul said that we have to submit to the authority over us. I, I love what he said later on in chapter 13 of Romans. Verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilled in the law. The rules that God gave us, the laws that God gave us. I don't care if you could obey every one of them, if your motivation was wrong, if you did not base your following the rules on love, then you didn't follow the rules. You see, that's what Jesus pointed out all through the, the Sermon on the Mount. He said, basically, it don't matter how well you follow the rules if you don't do it because of love for one another. You see, if we love God, if we love one another, then it becomes easier to follow the rules. Folks, you're going to be encountered by those people who hate Christians. You're going to encounter people who, whose views make you sick. You're going to encounter people in this world that demand rights that you don't agree with. You're going to encounter people in this world who um, think it's okay to kill unborn babies. You're going to encounter people in this world that goes against everything that you hold dear. They're all around us. And you are responsible to love them. I've heard a lot of things said about Nancy Pelosi here lately. I mean, if you, if any of you's on Facebook, if you've ever, you know, you you'll see all kinds of stuff. Let me tell you something. 
Believe it or not, Nancy Pelosi is your neighbor. That might be hard to understand. That might be hard to accept. And yeah, it might be hard to love her. But think about this. How hard is it for Jesus to love you? How hard do you think it was for God to show you enough love to send his son to die on the cross for you? I don't think that was an easy thing to do, but he did it. When you think about being a better you, when you think about being the best you, as you try to fulfill your uh, resolutions, as you try to, to be a better person, in the new year. You can't do it if you have hatred. You can't do it unless you learn to love everyone. Even those that you don't agree with. Even those that you don't even like. It's in our commandments. Go all the way back to Leviticus 19 as, is, as the laws are being spelled out. As the laws are being given. As, as Leviticus 19 gives you partly the, the commandments but also just gives you good rules to live by. Right in the middle of it in verse 18 it tells us that we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. And then it's reiterated all through the scripture. Every decision we make Every action that we take needs to be based on our love for God and our love for fellow man. And that's the only way you can be a better you. This morning, whatever your needs are, whatever you've, whatever you've been holding back, this morning as Matthew comes to, to lead us in a song, folks, if you've got somebody that's just maybe been on your heart Maybe you just had a hard time having love for somebody this morning. Just come lay it on the altar as we stand.